So here looking at Cauchy-Euler second order differential equations, we have our form listed. We have ax squared y double prime plus bxy prime plus cy is equal to some function g of x. You'll notice in our form we have the power of x matches the order of the derivative here. Here we have x to the first and the first derivative. Here we have no derivative and we have no x there. So when the right side is equal to zero, we'll call this homogeneous equation. When g of x is not equal to zero, we'll call this non-homogeneous. Um, and the overall method that we're going to use to sort of explore this is looking for solutions of the form y is equal to x to the m, x to some power. If you'll remember back when we did the uh, just the second order equations with the auxiliary equations, looking at the homogeneous equations, uh, we looked for solutions in the form y equals e to the mx. Works nicely with those, and you'll see that y equals x to the m is actually the form that's going to work nicely for us here. So let's look at that. Okay, so let's just start by assuming that y equals x to the m, just to explore this idea of those being solutions. So if that's true, if I look at this equation, well, that gives me something to plug in for y, but I also have a y prime and I have a y double prime. So if we think about the derivative of y, well, that would be power rule there, so we would get m times x to the m minus 1 if we take the derivative of y. And then if we do the derivative again, giving us y double prime, then that means we already have an m out front, so m minus 1 is going to join it out front. So we'd get m and an m minus 1 out front. And then decreasing the power again would give us the m minus 2 power for y double prime. So taking all of that information, plugging it in this equation, we get a x squared and then y double prime. So I'll go ahead and plug that in. So that's m times m minus 1 x to the m minus 2 plus b x y prime y prime is m times x to the m minus 1 plus c times y y is x to the m equal to 0 and now let's sort of see what happens here you notice we can combine powers of x so here we have x squared x to the m minus 2, if we add those exponents together, 2 plus m minus 2 then gives us x to the m, and we get just the m times m minus 1, plus, and then you'll notice we have one copy of x, we have m minus 1 copies of x, so we combine those, that would give us again m copies of x, so that'll give us x to the m times m, and then here we have c times x to the m. Nothing to do there. So what we can do is we can go ahead and factor out x to the m. So that will give us x to the m times, and then I'll just go ahead and say here, so this is a m times m minus 1 plus b m plus c is what we have left over equal to zero. If I do just a tiny little bit of distributing here inside the brackets, so we'll get x to the m times a m square minus a m plus b m plus c is equal to zero. And then if we go ahead and combine the like terms, the equation we end up with is x to the m times the quantity a m squared plus, and then the coefficient for m is really b minus a, if we combine these two terms here, times m plus c equal to zero. Okay, so we will get that x to the m is a solution whenever this expression here in the brackets is equal to zero. And that's what we'll focus on when we're solving this form. The only thing I think that is a real difference here is that we're used to, you know, a being the, the first coefficient and c being the last coefficient. And then we're looking at, okay, well, you know, we have this middle, but now it's b minus a instead of b. 
So we just want to make sure that when we're setting up the auxiliary equation that our, our middle term has b minus a in front of it. So let's take a look at uh, a couple of those. Okay, so first type, when we solve the auxiliary equation we get distinct real roots, then we get that our solution is going to be in this form here, y equals some constant times x to the m plus some constant times x to the m as well, where m1 and m2 are the solutions to our auxiliary equation. So here we'll just look at an example, uh, let's say x square y double prime plus 7xy prime plus 8y is equal to 0. So remember here the auxiliary equation is going to be a m square plus b minus a m plus c equal to 0. Based on this equation over here we have that a is equal to 1 b is equal to 7, and c is equal to 8. So according to that, then we would get 1m squared plus b minus a, 7 minus 1 would be 6m, plus c is 8. And so we're solving m squared plus 6m plus 8 equals 0. Here I've written this so this factors, so we get m plus 4, we get m plus 2 equals 0, and so our answers here then are m is equal to negative 2, negative 4. Based on this form for our solutions here, y is a linear combination of those x to those powers, so some multiple of x to the minus 2 plus some multiple of x to the minus 4. For the repeated real roots case, you want to remember when we had just the basic second order equation, whenever we had repeated roots, let's say uh, m1 was equal to uh, 3 and m2 was also equal to 3. The way we did this before was we said, well, we needed these to be linearly independent, so we had some multiple of e to the 3x, and then so we didn't have a repeat e to the 3x, we had x times e to the 3x, which made neither of these functions uh, multiples of one another in some combination. And so that's the way we solved the linear independence issue, was by multiplying in a factor of x. When we have repeated real roots in the Cauchy-Euler situation, what we're going to do is multiply in a factor of ln x to create the linear independence for the terms. So if I go ahead and give you an example here, let's try 9x squared y double prime plus 3xy prime plus y equal to 0. So in this one here, we'll notice, remember, so the form is am squared plus b minus am plus c equal to 0. Here a is equal to 9, b is equal to 3, c is equal to 1. And so our auxiliary equation over here would be 9m squared. b minus a, 3 minus 9 would be negative 6, so we'd get minus 6m plus c, which is 1, equal to 0. When we factor this, we might get 3m minus 1, 3m minus 1 equal to 0. So here in both of these, we get that m is equal to a third, so we get repeated real roots. And so our solution is going to be y equals c1 x to the 1 third, or cube root of x, plus c2 x to the one-third times ln x, since we have repeated roots. So this is based on the same idea as when we had complex roots with the auxiliary equation before. We might have gotten that m was equal to alpha plus or minus 
beta i as our complex numbers. Okay, and so that gave us then the form that y was equal to e to the x times the quantity c1 cosine of beta x plus c2 sine of beta x. And so you can kind of see this is loosely based since we're not using exponentials here anymore. That becomes polynomial base here. We still keep the c1 cosine and c2 sine and you'll notice we get beta ln x inside of each of our trig functions here. So let's go ahead and work an example. You'll see how this is similar to those. Let's go ahead and work x square y double prime minus 9xy prime plus 28y is equal to 0. Okay, so here our form a m square plus b minus a m plus c equals 0. Here a is equal to 1, b is equal to negative 9, c is 28. So according to that here, so that would be 1m square, b minus a, negative 9 minus 1, so that would be a negative 10m, and then plus 28 equal to 0. We go ahead and solve this by a quadratic formula, or completing the square, and we will get that m is equal to 5 plus or minus square root 3i. So for this example here, alpha would be equal to 5, beta would be equal to the square root of 3. And then according to the form we have down here in the corner, we're going to get our solution is y equal to x to the fifth times c1 cosine of, so we need beta times ln x, so that would be root 3 ln x plus c2 sine of beta, which is root 3 ln of x. Okay, so that gives you at least one example to go off of uh, based on your uh, new auxiliary equation with that b minus a in the middle term, uh, whether you get distinct real roots, repeated real roots, or you get complex roots like we did here. It'll be one of those three forms. Uh, now, these are all homogeneous, meaning we've worked all these problems where it's equal to zero. Those of you moving beyond the homogeneous case, we have the non-homogeneous solution method, you would again solve the associated equation that we just did, so you do the work we just did, that would give you your complementary function, your y sub c. Then what you need to do after that is you would need to go to variation of parameters. Variation of parameters, though, is based on the idea that the first term is just y double prime. So we say here what you would need to do as you begin to do that, after you get y sub c, you would need to divide through the entire equation by ax squared to put it into the standard form. And then you would use variation of parameters based on what we did in our variation of parameters method to find y sub p. And then you'd write your solution as we have before, y equals the complementary function plus the particular solution. And just to note there, make sure that if you have anything that looks like a copy of the other, we want to make sure all terms are linearly independent whenever writing solutions. So that's just a, a brief outline of how you would work the non-homogeneous forms.